let the mommy wars begin. Full-time job or full-time mom? What is a mother to do? Which comes first, the job or the family? Since the 1990s, it's been hard to watch coverage of parenting without hearing about America's ceaseless so-called mommy wars between employed mothers and those who stay at home. Do we really put our kids at risk every time we head to the office? Today, 70% of U.S. mothers work outside the home. They've become a mainstay of the American labor force. We have to address the facts that women are working, and it's very unlikely that we're going to go back to a situation where women don't work in such high right. numbers. For most of the mothers in this world, there isn't an option. What if this war we've heard so much about actually isn't? The vocabulary we've been handed is one of debate, conflict, and it's a war. I mean, war? It is dinner time in a lot of American households. For many mothers who now work, as well as fathers, it is often the first time in many hours they have seen their children. It is a problem. The American women trying to have it all, a job and a family. When young children are involved, there's the question, would the kids be better off if their mother stayed home with them? For decades, anxiety about working moms has been a staple of our public conversation about parenting. By the 1990s, when three-quarters of U.S. moms held jobs, working mothers like Bridget Schulte still faced a cultural headwind. To be a working parent at that time was to feel really awful every day when you left the house. I felt really polluted by guilt. I am spending all this time at work, and then I come home, so I must not be devoting all this time and energy to my kids, or I'm not doing the same thing that my mother did. Must you stay at home in order to raise a successful and happy child? You couldn't go very far without seeing some kind of headline about mothers in particular abandoning their children. A child needs a mother. I think it's very important that I work. Don't condemn me because I choose my kids as my job. We're in the middle of mommy wars here on the show. At the heart of the mommy wars is a sense of ambivalence about our choices, that we're not really quite sure that going to work is the right thing. We're not really quite sure that staying home is the right thing. And few talking points crystallized the worry better than a single eye-popping statistic. Parents today spend about 40% less time with their children than they did a generation ago. 40% less time. 40% less time uh, in, with their families. When that statistic comes out that says, guess what, all of your fears are true, that just hit like a bomb. The number came from William Maddox, then an analyst with the Family Research Council. In editorials, policy papers, and interviews, he highlighted parenting studies alongside all kinds of social ills. We're living in an age, after all, with high teen sexuality, high teen pregnancy, AIDS, violence in schools. This is a very, very different sort of environment in which children are being raised. Maddox attributed his 40% number to John Robinson, a University of Maryland sociologist. There was just one problem. And I says, where do people get this number? Doesn't make any sense. William Maddox declined to go on camera, but he told us he calculated the figure by taking 1965 child care time figures from this book by John Robinson. In comparing them to what he thought were 1985 numbers Robinson had summarized in this magazine article. But Robinson's article contained mistakes that made the 1985 numbers appear falsely low, and Maddox never checked the underlying data. So, since then, whenever anybody's called and asked about it, I've corrected them that, that in fact, the, this was absolutely uh, uh, an erroneous conclusion. But that false statistic fueled the conventional wisdom. We spend 40% less time as parents with children than we did a generation ago. Because more and more parents were working outside the home, they have less and less time for their children. It resonated for people because we were used to this idea that women were supposed to be staying home and taking care of their kids. Children are starving for attention from their parents. Am I hearing a call for, for working mothers to go back home? Yet much of the media narrative about perceived harm that working mothers inflict on kids has missed a surprising fact. Over time, we've seen something really amazing and dramatic in American parenting. That is, particularly for mothers, they have marched out into the labor force in great numbers, and they have done this at the same time they are increasing their time with children in what we call primary care time. That's right, parenting time is increasing. 
By analyzing time diary data from parents, Milky found that working mothers by 2000 spent as much time interacting with their children, that's reading and playing with their kids, changing and feeding them, as stay-at-home moms did back in 1975. And over the years, even total time with kids has gone up on average. How could this possibly be? Mothers have given up other things. Housework, some of their leisure time, a little bit of sleep. There's less spouse time among married parents. So lots of changes have added up to this amazing feat of the mothers spending the same or more time with their kids than they did in the past. And some historians say mothers having full days free to devote just to their kids are a more recent development than you might think. Throughout most of history, moms did not spend a lot of time with their kids. People worked on farms or small businesses. It wasn't until the 1920s that a bare majority of children transferred into families where the man earned the income. And in the 1950s, we began to think of it as the traditional family. A woman's place is in the home, and uh, I suppose as long as she's in the home, she might as well be in the kitchen. People have been looking at the Leave it to Beaver reruns that have a wife just waiting for all the kids to come home. When I interview kids raised in those homes, their women were much too busy doing housework, mopping floors. We're going out tonight. I've got to rush. Preparing for the husband to come home to spend much developmental time with them. More recently, sociologist Amy Shin has studied the impact that time spent parenting has on kids. There's so much anxiety, so much emphasis placed on spending enough time with your children. What we find is that sheer quantity of time doesn't really matter. It's really the specific types of activities you do with that time that matter. Shin and her colleagues found that reading with children, sharing meals with them, interacting with them does, of course, have benefits. But so do other things. Parental education really matters. Growing up in a safe neighborhood matters. Um, attending a good school matters. The effect of time is, is a, a drop in the bucket if you consider the whole set of factors that actually have meaningful impact in, for children. And preoccupation with mother's time has contributed to the enduring one-sidedness of our public conversations about raising kids. What about the fathers? We kind of let them off the hook. Nobody was telling fathers that it was time for them to leave work earlier or spend more time with their kids. Nobody was telling fathers that they needed to quit their jobs, that they weren't doing the right thing with their lives. Since 1965, married fathers have nearly tripled the amount of childcare they do. Good news that's tempered by one nagging fact. Mothers still spend almost twice as much time with their kids as fathers do, but the gap is shrinking. And we should encourage families to make sure that gap shrinks and disappears. Research suggests that fathers taking part in childcare produce a whole host of benefits for children, from better language skills to more empathy. And fathers who get involved early tend to stay that way. Fathers are important emotionally to children. Fathers are important in terms of play and the time they spend with them. Fathers who spend time with their kids, even from the very earliest moments after birth, are likely to have better connections, things that can last a lifetime. In those early moments, when the baby first comes home, that's when the family dynamics get set. What's the one policy change that could really make a difference for, for women, for work and family, for uh, gender issues? Uh, and more than anything, I'll say parental leave for dads. Solo parental leave for dads. And some argue that discussion of those kinds of policies has been overshadowed in decades of debate over whether or not individual women should be working. Because what? featuring mommies throwing food at each other. We're not talking about the need for universal childcare, the need for flexible hours. We haven't had a real significant piece of national policy since the Family and Medical Leave Act, which is 25 years ago. And the fact that so many people are combining work and family is a real testament to individual families and their ingenuity. Because our companies, our culture, and our our, our national policies don't make it easy. The stay-at-home moms. The stay mommy wars is very parallel to the way the media covers everything. Conflict are us, you know. Let's put it all in terms of a conflict. You think working moms are selfish. You're saying stay-at-home moms are lazy? The media only does feelings that are absolute certainties hurled at each other. And that's what happened with the mommy wars.